streams. We gotta cut out a hole. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Man Van video. We lowered it in the last video, stock wheels, we put this lip on it, but now we need to do what I feel like I'm almost the best at doing, which is Paint stuff. Big, big fan of paint stuff. It's been a while since I painted stuff, but I think we're gonna skip out on some primer. I don't think we have to prime anything in this video. Right here, you can see this OEM front bumper. It's had its run ins with things, probably curbs, probably the back of like a Nissan Altima or something like that. It needs painted. Like, I could probably fix that, but it doesn't make sense to fix that when uh, carparts.com has Very great new. parts at affordable prices straight to your door, right? Look at that, right there. I don't so that's not that's not even their slogan, but we're just we're coming up with slogans. Form. So anyhow, we got this front lip. Obviously, we needed to paint that. Uh, I want to do some stuff with the grill and kind of paint match that whole thing. I think that would, thing would look good, just matching everything else. We have some dents. We have a dent in the hood. Should we fix that and paint the hood, or should we just do the bumper and the lip? If you're gonna do that. You might as well paint the, hint, the fenders too, and then blend into the doors. So the yeah, but then if we're gonna do that, we might as well paint, paint the whole, whole car. Thing, so yeah. it's like I think it, we're kind of at that point where it's like just bumper lip for now. The rear bumper needs painted. Yeah. Like. I want to. I just want to get the front. So come on over here. We already know the lip fits great on the bumper. Now we have some fog lights. I got this little Milwaukee multi-tool, and basically what we got to do, we got to cut out a hole. Now we're gonna save our uh, things fit. Maybe we are gonna have to pull out a little bit of primer. So uh, the other day we had this thing sitting outside in the sun, and then the wind, the wind came over and went. Whew. So we got a couple scratches, a couple little things right here. So we might be able to sand them out. Might be able to just put a a little bit of uh, some of that icing, some of that putty on it. But for now, we're gonna get these uh, holes cut out, get the fog lights and everything fit up in there. And then we're on to painting. We're hope we're gonna paint some stuff, right? What are you gonna do today? I oh, don't know, I just came to fuck off. I'm gonna go out back and look at my Civic real quick. Oh, okay. What one? Yep. Yeah. What one? What one? We got the rear, the left side fog light installed. It looks great from the front, but not very good. For Randy, hey, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. <laughs> fog light from the front, looks great. Now we just gotta cut this one. Now that I've already done the other one, I think I know how to make it a little bit. I spent like an hour doing that. So basically everything is all scuffed. Took longer than we thought. A couple of those little scuffs that were in the front of the bumper, we went ahead and hit them with uh, 400 grit, sanded them down. There was enough of like the factory primer on this bumper that it kind of, uh, they blended in pretty nice. And I'm gonna be using a 2K sealer primer on here uh, that is going to be, it's gonna be white. So that way this color sticks out a little bit more. So I guess we're just gonna spray it here in a couple minutes. The other thing, look at this. Should I do the middle? Like the grill black. I don't really feel like taping it off, so I think I'm just gonna paint this over. If I don't like it later, I'll just go back in with a little bit of a little bit of rattle bomb. Make it make it look new, you know. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now, as you can see, is kind of this weird sheen. This is actually a wax and grease remover. It, it's kind of weird because it smells just like solvent, or it smells like petroleum based, oil based. It smells like it would make paint like not stick to it, but it's actually it's just a good wax and grease remover. So going over the whole thing. Normally I'll do this once or twice. You kind of do like a first one where you just completely soak the panel. And then after that, you kind of go back over it. Basically you kind of let this, the solvent like bring everything to the top after you wipe it. And then after you, like you can see, that was just some of the other stuff. But if I use like this clean piece right here, now that I've already kind of wiped this already, if you like go back over that, it kind of brings some more stuff to the top. And that's kind of why you kind of wet wipe it and then you go over it with like a new towel and just completely dry wipe it again after that. Putting the new lip on the old bumper, uh, just cause like these things are polyurethane and you know, they're just, like if we let this thing sit on kind of overnight, I don't want it to like get like a weird thing. And then when we go to put the bumper back on it, 
it basically crack or uh, you know flex the paint because it's mad. Which paint is pretty malleable for the first like you know week or so depending because it, it's kind of still you know gas now it's solvents and it's not completely like hardened yet. The other thing is like paint normally isn't like 100% cured for like more than 30 days sometimes. So like if you ever paint a car and like you drive it somewhere you know and like it's sitting in the sun you could just smell it like you, sometimes you go to like a car show or something you could like you're like wow. You look at it and it's just like a fresh painted car or something. That's usually how my S14 used to be. A couple of years ago, I'd go to the, the drift event with like fresh paint from like two days before. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit this with some adhesion promoter, uh, just in uh, kind of a rattle can, some 1K adhesion pro promoter, just kind of be safe. Primer sealer, 2K with hardener, base coat, clear coat. This right here, some 2K primer sealer. Been sitting for a minute, so we gotta, we gotta stir it up. I feel a little rusty. When was the last time I painted anything? Supra hood. I had to paint a Supra hood. A blue one. The blue one that blew on top of the car. I just, there was this, this Supra that we had this one time. It needed a hood. What ECU plugged in? There's a fuel pump ECU. Why is it out? I bypassed it. Oh, that's great. so I bought one and I painted it and put it on there. All right, so a quick little trick. If you don't want to get paint all in the rim of your uh, your paint, your primer, your clear, whatever, because that this is what happens. That's what happens if you don't do this. I'll show you guys a little trick to keep that clean and you happy. As you can see, this one's pretty clean just because I've been doing this throughout the life of me using it. If you're just going to use like the whole can and you know you're going to use the can, you don't really have to care a whole lot. But if it's like, oh, you're going to pour a little bit off it, and then plan on reusing it later and not getting mad. And then sometimes if there's paint left over in there, if you hit it with a hammer, it'll splat. It'll get on your belly you, and you have a paint belly. So you take this little thing, we just go right here. All right, so we're at our correct mixing ratio. And then now what you do is you just come over here to the trash can. You go, there's no paint down on our rim. Good to go. So, front lip is completely painted, clear coated, looking pretty good. I didn't do really any prep or anything. There is a, you know, it's not a perfect lip. A couple little things that you can see, kind of hard to tell, but it's uh, basically like some fiber looking stuff. Not, it almost looks like sand scratches, but it's just kind of like a deformity in like the mold uh, from them doing like polyurethane stuff. With this color, the way it's gonna do it should hide a lot of stuff. It's not a show car yet, and if it uh, if it ever decided to be a show car, we'd probably just end up painting the whole thing, would be, uh, would be the goal. So, front bumper's all painted. It's pretty crazy how clean of jobs you could actually get just by painting in the shop. You know, in a paint booth, you have a lot of flow moving through, but that also gives you the opportunity to like pick stuff up and drag it through the paint. Whereas if you're kind of in a shop like this and it's kind of stagnant, you'll have a little bit more overspray hanging around for longer but overall there's less volume of air going over the parts. So there's, you still get stuff in it, no matter what. Paint booths are dirty, painting in the shop is dirty. I think this thing is gonna look really cool once we get the lip and everything on the van with the fog lights. But uh, for now, it's time to head home. It's dinner time, actually. Definitely crazy. Um, I'm not sure how this grill is gonna look. We just kind of painted the whole thing. 
Uh, I eventually want a new one, but for now, I just wanted to see what this was like. And it was kind of kind of dingy and gross anyhow with the chrome. So I said, let's just paint the whole thing, see what it looks like on there, and uh, we'll go from there. So see you guys in probably a couple minutes when we get ready to install this thing. Right, guys, so now that we have the front bumper and fog lights on here, it looks sick. It honestly looks really cool. And even with the stock wheels and tires, it, it obviously looks better than it, it used to. It, it doesn't look near as good as it's getting ready to. So uh, I'd like to introduce you guys to these wheels. So Anovia Wheels was uh, kind enough to send us some of their new Deco directional wheels. So these are 19 by nine and a half plus 35, five by 120 bolt pattern. And this is their elder model, which is kind of more of like a VIP looking thing. But the unique thing about the wheels is they're Deco directional. So that means that the left side of the car has wheels that go a certain way and the right side of the car has the wheels that go the same way. So that way the wheels aren't like pointed back this way and the other side aren't like pointed this way and it makes it look weird because then like one side of your car always looks better. I'm glad that they sent them out. They're flow formed, they're uh, super lightweight, really strong with the flow form technology. I'm really familiar with that stuff just because the relationship I have with Koenig, all the wheels that I run on some of the other cars, they're flow formed as well. And it keeps them really lightweight, really strong, but also affordable. And uh, honestly, the price on these things is, uh, is pretty cheap for what they are. So uh, we've already unboxed and test fit the other side just because we had to figure out what tires we we're gonna do. But let's go ahead and open these things up. they got on here, look at that. Dude, those are sick. And so the, the unique thing it too is like, on the side of the box it shows all your wheel specs but it says like left or right, so that you actually pick what side, or you, you know, so that you know what side of the car that they're supposed to go on. You got a wheel cap, center cap in here. So everything's really nicely packaged, I like. It says have fun, enjoy, have fun, enjoy. And the inside of the box is painted. It looks like the box is like really expensive. like. They probably have like five or 10 bucks in each one of these boxes. And then look at this. What is that? That's like a, that's like a, it's like magnetic. So I, I think that's what they're trying to do with these wheels since it's like their art formed wheels is the wheels are supposed to be like art. Oh wow, look at that. So we got this little sticker. Where does that go? I don't know. Does it go in there? I don't know. Or does it go in here? I think it goes like right there somewhere. That's cool. That looks like, yeah. And look at this. Is this a billet freaking center cap? It's got a little O-ring. And then it comes with its own little valve stem seal too that matches all the branding and everything. That's cool. That's sick. Well, I guess let's uh, let's get to mounting these things. Mount the tires on these guys. See how they look. So it goes this way, and then you put it in there like that, okay? Yeah. And then put it right there. Yep, right there. Beautiful. What do you think of these wheels? You like them?
Jenny. Are you ready to see no. your new van? It's not for me. Wow. <laughs> you like that? I don't get it still. Why? Look at it. <laughs> I just don't get it. What are you gonna do with you it? You drove now? it. You drove us know. home in it no, one but night. I just want you to I wanna know what you're gonna do with it now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I have That's... no clue. But look at it though. Is it, so now I can look at it, it and I can say my van. Look at See, that's my van. That's daddy's van. Daddy's van. Daddy's van. Daddy's van. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> see you later. So see you next time. Bye. All right, guys. So first drive in the van. It feels great. It feels great. You hit a little, if you hit some bumps, it'll go. But I think the, what we're gonna consider this is a self-clearancing van. But it's it's crazy because with, even with the rear lip, or with the rear like fender lip and then like the fender's not being rolled, it doesn't rub in the back. It rubs a little bit in the front if you hit a bump. Like we'll hit some bumps here in a minute. For you guys. That's it. That's it. That was all that's all we get. That's honestly not, that's bad. not that bad. Get in, loser, we're going shopping.